Hello and welcome back to the Household of Faith Daily Devotionals uh, for Wednesday <laughs> the 17th. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today we're talking, uh, we're continuing to talk about uh, the gifts for the body. And today we're going to talk about the parts in its place. And we're still referencing 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to pick up with verse 18, where Paul is telling us that, you know, God is the one who decides about the parts. And he's put every part of the body, and that's us. We are parts of the body. He's put us in the place where he wants us to be. You know, a long time ago, um, I heard, and not too long ago, I came to understand it is God who plants us. God transplants us, and God moves us. And when he moves us, when he transplants us, um, and he plants us, we prosper, we grow, we re reproduce for the kingdom. When we move ourselves, when we transplant ourselves, and when we um, actually do the planting, then we, we become out of place. And one of the things that's going on right now within the body of Christ is there are many people who are out of place. And I spoke about this uh, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about the fivefold ministry and the reason we have so many pastors and uh, that are not really true pet that are not shepherds. And I make a distinction between a pastor and a shepherd because just because you're an ordained minister does not make you a pastor. And a lot of people really need to understand that being ordained is something that we have come to this place where this piece of paper is very important. And it's almost as important as when people say, well, you're a believer, you're a Christian and you don't go to church. Well, you know, if you're going out and if you're doing the work of the kingdom, and I don't mean that you're out there on your own, just fly by night, but when the Lord leads you to go to a place, when he leads you to go in a place, and when he leads you to speak to someone and you're carrying forth the word of God and people are being saved and set free and blessed, that's more important than whether you're sitting down on some pew warming a bench, taking up a space that someone who needs to learn the word is. now. Knowing, and with that being said, everyone that is mature in Christ does not need to go out. Everyone, I mean, and I don't mean it like that. I mean, they don't need to not be in a church home. I, I grew up thinking and, you know, with the understanding that, oh, you got to have a church home. You got to have a covering. Well, you know, my pastor, Floyd Scott, he, his church is way over on the other side of the metro place, you know. And it is not easy for me to get there. It is a, um, it, it takes effort, a great, a great effort to get there, especially since I don't have my own car. I have to rely on someone else for transportation. And so that is, that's just a fact, you know. It's neither good or bad. It is just the way it is. But also, for the years that I sat under that ministry and learned, the, what I understand is that I'm not supposed to just be sitting up there soaking up the word and feasting off of the word if I'm not in and, and it's not benefiting anyone else. If the word is not manifesting itself in my life, what I'm saying is that if I'm not walking out the things that I'm hearing and growing and maturing in Christ, what good is that word doing me? Just to sit there and get fat on the word? No, no, that doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help me, it doesn't help anyone else because whatever you know, whatever you learn, whatever you hear, you're gonna be tested on that. And you have to at some point encounter other people to share with them what you know to be true. And I'm not talking about inviting someone to your church. I'm way past that. You know, people invite me to their church all the time. And I recently had a coworker invite me to her church because she said they were having their church anniversary and the pastor wanted them all to invite at least three people or whatever you know and I trust me I've been in that situation years ago and it's not that kind of bondage I'm not trying to return to why because if I am already a believer what good does it do me to just visit your church I know I'm not trying to be funny but what's the point should you be inviting someone who doesn't know Jesus to your church if you're going to invite someone to church? But the problem is, is that 
we don't want to invite the unsaved to our church. We don't want to because most of the time we're afraid they're going to embarrass us. And what I want to convey with this thing is about being a member of the body is that we are all required by the word of God to go out and to seek those who are lost. It's a requirement. It's, it's not uh, something that we can just say, oh, if we feel like it or, or if we have the chance. No, it is our number one priority to reach the lost because the word tells us that the Lord is not coming back until the gospel has been preached to all the world. And I'm going to be honest with you. There are so many people that live right around you who have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They've never heard the truth of the gospel of why Jesus came and he did not just come to save us from our sins so that we could go to heaven there's so much more to what he came to do for us but they've heard the gospel of prosperity the gospel of me the gospel according to me and the gospel that you know says I can do whatever I want and behave any way I want and still call myself a Christian they've, they've heard all those different kind of gospels and they've seen the results in the people that they know and family members and in the churches that they've gone to but they've not heard the truth of Christ and it's our job to share that truth with them so God has placed you wherever he placed you for a specific reason and it's not always about why am I here Lord it's more about what is it that you need me to do in this place at this time okay all right well we'll see you tomorrow